In the last seven days, my YouTube channel has gone from 515 subscribers to over 7,000 subscribers. And to be honest with you, I'm not that surprised. And that's because I've been using a simple AI system built entirely in innate in with no code designed to execute a strategy that I learned from some of the biggest YouTubers on earth. And you can literally copy the entire thing for free. On this YouTube channel, I do things a little bit different because I believe that AI automations don't have to be complicated in order to be powerful. So in this video, I'm not only gonna show you the YouTube growth strategy that I've been using, I'm also gonna show you how to build the AI system to handle the heavy lifting of it. But if you wanna skip the build entirely, you can click below, head over to my free school community and download this along with a lot of other templates 100% for free. And by the way, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, let's go ahead and dive on in. Now, before I dive into the strategy, I wanna show you a quick demo of this system in action just so you get an idea of what we're gonna be talking about in this video. So first I'm gonna test the workflow and I'm gonna type in a keyword or topic. In this case, I'm just gonna type in innate in tutorials. Now, the first thing that's gonna happen is our workflow is gonna go out and find every video that is trending within that category, that topic or keyword that you selected. Then it's gonna add it to a sheet. It's gonna analyze the thumbnail. It's gonna pull the transcript and then it's gonna generate you a new title, a new thumbnail text and a new outline improved from the one that's already trending. And here you can see we've got our trending videos with all of the information, including our new title, our new thumbnail text and our new outline. Line, uh, all in one place. Okay, so let's dissect this strategy. And I wanna reiterate that I did not come up with this strategy. I actually took it from some of the biggest YouTubers in the world, and it's actually been used for years because unlike the algorithm, this strategy is pretty constant. And I'm gonna explain why in just a second. So let's dive into it. The YouTube growth strategy explains simply. So at its core, the strategy is simple. It's to find what's already working and to model it. And while you're probably rolling your eyes right now and going, duh, the idea is simple. Um, but the execution is difficult. And so I'm gonna walk through the execution right now. So step one is identifying trending YouTube videos. Now, one of the simplest ways to do this is to find videos that have more views than the channel has subscribers. Well, why is that an indication that it's trending? Well, when a video gets pushed beyond the channel's core audience, the YouTube algorithm is signaling that this video is bringing new users to the platform or it's keeping existing users on the platform or both. And this is exactly why this strategy works regardless of what changes come to the algorithm because YouTube as a platform is a marketplace business, which means it has two sides to it. You have content producers and content consumers. And without one or the other, the business fails. And so what a lot of content creators don't realize is that you are, or in this case, I am YouTube's product. And they are using YouTube's product to attract consumers or viewers to the platform. And YouTube ultimately makes money when viewers come to the platform and stay on the platform through AdSense. So they're able to show ads, which they monetize by charging the marketing companies or individuals who are paying for the ads. And that's essentially how the model works. So essentially on a video launch, YouTube will show the video to pockets of an audience to see how it does. And if it performs to a certain level, then YouTube is incentivized to start showing it as many times as it can. And when they're doing this, YouTube is saying that they believe that this content is going to not only attract, but hold the attention of audiences to keep people on the platform longer. Now that we know what to look for as a simple metric, now let's take a look at what we do with that. So step two is to model what's already working. So once you've found a winning video, the next step is to analyze it and model it. So the core principles that you need to understand in order to do this is that the most crucial pieces of a YouTube video are the title and the thumbnail. And so the title is actually what gets your video discovered. The thumbnail is what earns the click. And so it's really important to remember that you can have the best content in the world, but if no one sees it, then it doesn't matter. So the first steps to actually driving traffic is showing up in the feed and earning the click. That means that your job as the creator is to stack the odds in your favor. And we do this by studying top performing titles and looking at the structures or language used and breaking down winning thumbnails. And then you reverse engineer what made the content resonate. I'm gonna go in just a second and explain why mine took off. Now, it is important to note that you can do this every single time and it won't work every time, okay? You see, this strategy is all about stacking the odds in your favor. And so all you're really doing is trying to give your channel the best possible chance of being found as often as possible. When I was doing this for the first channel I ever built for my former boss, the first five to 10 videos didn't get very many views and then one took off, very similar to my channel. And it was the same strategy, right? We were doing the same thing over and over, um, but it wasn't until one of them caught that suddenly uh, that attracted audiences and started getting reach. And then the other videos started getting attention from that as well. And so it's somewhat of a snowball effect. And so as a typical rule of thumb, um, the goal isn't to make every video go viral. The goal is to have one in every four to 10. 
content. And that really depends on what type of content you have, what style you have, and what type of content your audience is looking for. So let's take a look at why my video took off. So first off, AI in general is a trending topic. Claude 4 had launched 24 hours prior. n 8 n and no-code automations are trending, but a lot of people are overwhelmed with the builds and are looking for an easy button. And so what I did is I had actually already found, using this automation, similar topics to this, but they didn't have this unique spin. They weren't talking about Claude 4. They weren't talking necessarily about the easy button. They weren't showing proof. And so what I did is I took the ideas that had done pretty well, and then I modeled them and improved upon them. And you can see what happened with my channel here. We can see May 22nd, I had 515 subscribers, and you can see on the 29th, I'm up to over 7,000. And again, this isn't because I'm so great or my channel is so great. All I did was I found what people are already looking for and searching for and engaging with, and then I just put my content in front of them. So the irony to me making this video is that this video is probably not going to take off because there aren't currently any major trends or a particular topic that I'm leaning on to show this. What I am doing is using this video as more of a case study to represent how this strategy can work and how we can use AI automations to actually execute this strategy for us, okay? So how can we automate it? So the goal in the automation is to build something that researches and crafts a new title, new thumbnail, and improves or finds a unique angle for you to create content about while staying close to the original topic. Now, the old way of doing this, I would spend four to six hours researching and looking for content. And then I would be documenting and looking for patterns. This was before AI came around. And so it was a very time consuming task. And now with the click of a button, I can actually do this research in around two minutes. So that's the automation I'm actually going to show you today. Now that we've covered the strategy and you understand the basic thought process, let's go take a look at the build to understand how and why it works the way it works. Now getting into the workflow, let's go ahead and run a test. Um, that way we can track how the information is being passed. And for this, I'm going to select a keyword and then I'll show you how I set up each node. So let's start with uh, N8N tutorials and I'm going to hit submit. Looks like it just finished. So let's go ahead node by node and examine how this was built. So starting with the first, this one is triggering off of a form submission. Now you can do this a lot of different ways. You could do it off of a scheduled um, trigger, which is like, hey, once a week, go through and do this or a daily trigger, or you could do a manual trigger. There's a lot of different ways you could do this. I chose a form so that I can change up what it is searching for. So the field name is keyword or topic, the element uh, type is text, and then they have the option to change out whatever it is they'd like to search for. In the next node, we have an HTTP request that's being sent off to Appify. And I found this uh, actor, it's a YouTube scraper, it's gonna be this one right here, that allows me to get a thousand videos for $5 right there. And so when you look at the manual input internally inside of Appify, um, it allows for search terms. And so that's the way I actually wanna try and find videos. Coming back over to the workflow, you can see that we've set up our uh, URL, it's a post request, and then we're sending over our headers, including our authorization with our bearer token, and then we're coming down to the body. Now, if I click into the body, you're gonna notice that it's the same JSON from the file, but it has one variable that's being filled in, and this is the variable from the form submission. So the other things that have changed are I want 100 results returned from any given search, looking for videos that are between four to 20 minutes long. And then I'm only scraping from the last 60 days. And so I don't want videos that were made one year ago, two years ago, three years ago. Those won't really be relevant because they're not going to be based on current trends. And that's the whole point of this. So looking for the last 60 days. Now you can push this up to about 120 days if you have a more niche, um, topic that you are researching, but um, 60 I found is kind of a sweet spot. Now this request does not have any filters to it. So all it's gonna do is it's gonna go and find every video related to those keywords that was made in the last 60 days um, and that fits the rest of that criteria. So what we then have to do is, you and you can see we've got 100 items that came through, we then need to filter those items. And so we have an if node. The if node is simply going to use two rules that I've found work really well for me. And that is first off, I wanna make sure that the view count on the video is a minimum of a thousand. And the reason for that is if you have uh, 10 uh, views on the video, that's not a very big sample size, but the other rule could still be followed. And then uh, that wouldn't really be a trending video, but it would still follow the, the more views and subscribers. So I have the view count as more than a thousand as a minimum, 
and the views must be greater than the number of channel subscribers. So with these two rules, you can see that there was 100 items input, and from that, only nine items uh, came out as true. The next step was to then go and find duplicates. And so on the next node, it's a sheets node with get rows and basically have our document and our sheet listed. And we're matching based on the column ID. So I just chose the column that was gonna be completely different for every single one. And then from this, you can see that it found a few of them. The next node is a merge node. And so we are combining matching fields to so the ones that match. And then for the output type, we're keeping the non matches uh, and we're pulling the output data from input number two. So it's only gonna bring over four items. So since this one found five items that were matching, this one is only going to pull four items from input number two. Next up, coming over into our sheets node, we're now going to append the data to the sheet. So this is just going to be the sheet that you want to. So this is just going to be the sheet that we want to populate, and then we've mapped each column manually. And you can see it's just mapped out to input, uh, title, URL, the from YouTube URL, the thumbnail URL, channel name, channel URL, duration, likes, number of subscribers, and view count. Now, if I come back over to our HTTP request you're gonna see a lot more information than that. You're gonna see descriptions and URLs and text and all sorts of things that aren't really necessary for what we're doing right now. And so I don't wanna pull all of those, which is why I hand selected and manually added them. So once we've added them to our sheet, it's gonna look something like this. So now that this data has been added to our sheet, the next step is to process the data. So coming back down here, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna analyze the thumbnail. And the reason we're doing this is so we can get a description of what the thumbnail is. Now you could use this if you wanted to, to go off and create another thumbnail with something like ChatGPT. Uh, I've played with it. I still prefer manually editing or having my editors do it. I think that we get a better result, but it's getting pretty close. You can see here one request I tried earlier uh, just to see if it could do an okay job, a very basic prompt, not much to it. I was just more curious about the image that it would put out and it got pretty close. So for this, we simply went into uh, an OpenAI node and selected Analyze an Image, and you can see that the operation is already filled in there. We chose our model, which is gonna be GPT-40 Mini. And then for our prompt, we actually added a much more robust prompt than we usually would, simply because we're not just asking it to analyze the image, we want a specific type of output, right? And so this is the way I did it. So first off for the structure, we've got our overview, context, instructions, tools, examples, input, SOP, and final notes. And then as our URL, all we did was we dragged in the URL for the thumbnail. And you can see it right over here on the left-hand side, thumbnail URL, drag and drop, and now it has something to pull from. Next up is gonna be another HTTP request, and this one is actually gonna to be to pull the transcript. So for this, we are pulling on another actor within Appify, and we chose a YouTube transcripts actor. So for this one, it's $7.50 per thousand transcripts, which is pretty good. And the way that you can see this is set up, we have our endpoint, it's a post method, and then we've got our headers with our authorization token. And then in the body, similar, all we're doing is dragging in the URL for the video. And there you go. And so you can see that it came back with all of the captions for this. From here, we push to a YouTube title generator. Now that we've collected the initial video data and we've added it to our sheet and we've analyzed the thumbnail and we've pulled the transcript, we wanna generate our own title and thumbnail text from that. As our input, we've provided uh, the video title the thumbnail description and the video transcript. And this is kind of what it looks like uh, as the expression. And that's gonna be our user message. And for this, I decided to use a 4.1 mini. And it's just a message model node. And so next up for our system prompt, it's a little bit more complex, but this is what we're doing. Coming over here, we have our outline generator. Now this one is gonna be another message model node. And what we're doing is we're using the 4.1 model uh, to analyze the transcript and then improve upon it and build a structure or an outline that we can use to then record another video. And for our user prompt right here, you can see we've added in our transcript. And then for our system prompt, um, very similar, but and let's actually go to a different one here. There we go. 
Um, you are an AI agent responsible for analyzing high performing YouTube video transcripts and generating improved original video outlines with a unique perspective. Context, the agent receives a transcript uh, of a successful YouTube video from another creator. The goal is to not copy, but to use the structure and content as a benchmark to craft a new outline that offers a distinct angle or interpretation of the topic. The resulting outline should maintain the engaging qualities of the original while providing fresh value to the target audience. And then just like the others, we have instructions, tools, examples, output, SOP, and final notes. And if you want, you can screenshot this, uh, or again, you can get all of this from the school community. So from here, all we're doing is then going through and updating our rows based on our ID. So with this, we're doing an update rows uh, sheets node. You can see we've selected not only our document, but our sheet itself, and we mapped each of these manually. Went through and we added in our video transcript from the HTTP request. We added our thumbnail transcript from the analyze thumbnail node, our thumbnail text from the YouTube title generator, new title from the YouTube title generator, and our new outline from the previous node. And what this looks like when we go back over to our sheet is we've got all of our video information and then we've got all of our new content on the right hand side. We've got our new title, our new outline, and our thumbnail text. And once again, you can see that these outlines are quite thorough. So with this, you now have a system that you can use to go out and find yourself trending videos and then help you create or simplify the creation process of new content. So with that being said, guys, I hope this was a valuable video. Don't forget you can get this template along with a lot of others in the free school community. The link is down below. And if you like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a comment if you have more thoughts or ideas around things that you'd like to see on this channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.